Suppress your enemies, leave them grasping at shadows, and keep them guessing with one of the most interesting skill trees in V Rising. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the illusion abilities, what they are, how to unlock them, and ultimately, if they're any good. As always when doing a ranking video here on the channel, I like to start by making it crystal clear. This type of content, these rankings, are subjective. What we think is bad or good may not be what you think is bad or good, and that's fine. We always appreciate you letting us know in the comments, and in many cases, you guys actually change our minds on a ranking. So let's just start on the same page before we dive in. Now to do a proper rankings video, at least in our eyes, you have to establish some ground rules. Something to keep us honest about how and why we're ranking things the way that we did. For our V-Rising series, we're keeping things relatively simple, focused on three key areas. Effectiveness in PvE, Effectiveness in PvP, and Utility. All of the abilities are running through that filter, and hopefully allows us to more accurately characterize everything we're talking about. The goal is for us to reveal each rank and for you guys to agree, or at least be close. So with the disclaimer out of the way and the ground rules established, let's dive in to the rankings. First up in the illusion skill tree is Mistrance. When activated, players block melee and projectile attacks for up to 1.5 seconds. Players also turn non-material and teleport to the cursor location when an attack is blocked. This also resets the cooldown of your secondary weapon attack. To unlock Mistrance, players need to kill Foulrot the Soul Taker in the Cursed Forest. He can be found in the ancient village in the eastern part of the area. For an ability unlocked so late into the V-Blood progression, I personally feel like Mistrance should just do a bit more. There's something to be said about an ability that allows you to go invulnerable for any period of time, but when the payoff is simply the ability to reposition and resetting a weapon cooldown, I start thinking about how it stacks up against similar moves in the game. There is value to being able to reposition after an enemy attack, and using the spell to completely negate an enemy's move is a strong benefit, but without an additional utility, it lags behind other, more powerful abilities that function in a similar way. What I will acknowledge is that there is viability in PvP, and as Livid pointed out in our conversation about all of these moves, this is one of the go-to high-end PvP skills. But if we remember back to our ground rules, usability in PvE, PvP, and utility, it brings a decent amount to the table, it just doesn't go all the way. With that in mind, Mistrance is getting a B rank. I do want to point out that Livid doesn't quite agree with this rank and believes the ability should be an A tier. Next on our list is Spectral Assassin. When cast, players summon a Spectral Assassin at a targeted location that performs a heavy melee attack, dealing 125% magic damage to nearby enemies, knocking them back and weakening them, reducing damage output by 30% for 5 seconds. To unlock this ability, players need to kill Leandra, the Shadow Priestess, in the Dunley Farmlands. She can be found up the hill at the altar in the Church of the Damned in the northern part of the area. Spectral Assassin is a really unique ability, one that I think could be rather good with some work. The mechanics of the spell are solid, when they actually work. Oftentimes, when you summon the Assassin, it fails to hit anything, because by the time the unit is summoned, winds up its swing, and actually executes the swing, enemies have moved. There's almost a skill shot component to an ability that clearly shouldn't be a skill shot, and if it was intended that way, it needs some work. That being said, in its current form, it's not a bad ability, just not great. The damage could be higher, but the knockback and weakening are both great aspects of the spell, which is why Spectral Assassin is getting a C rank. Moving right along, let's talk about Spectral Wolf. When cast, players send out a Spectral Wolf in a straight line, dealing 100% magic damage, inflicting a Fading Snare, and weakening the target, reducing the damage output by 30% for 5 seconds. This ability balances up to two nearby enemies, but deals 75% less damage per hit. To unlock this ability, players need to kill Palora the Feywalker in Western Farbane Woods. This V-Blood unit can be found in the Gleaming Meadows. Spectral Wolf is the first of the illusion abilities on the list that I truly think is good. Let's be clear though, you're not really using this ability for its damage. Because it doesn't crack 100%, you're not getting magic scaling, which means long term, the damage is going to seriously lag behind. What you do get, however, is a really solid utility spell that performs well in PvE and PvP. Both the Fading Snare and Weakening are good, but you factor in the spell's ability to bounce targets, and that really seals the deal. Unfortunately, because the damage component lags behind, it holds back Spectral Wolf from being a truly great ability, which is why it's getting a B rank. Our next illusion ability is Wisp Dance, another interesting spell within the tree. 
When cast, players summon three wisps that circle around them, dealing 25% magic damage to enemies hit. Players can recast the spell to launch all three wisps as projectiles, dealing 50% magic damage and weakening the target, reducing damage output by 30% for five seconds. To unlock Wisp Dance, players need to kill Gore Crusher the Behemoth in the Cursed Forest. This is one of the final V-Blood units currently in the game that can be found in the Lair of the Behemoth. For killing such a powerful enemy, you'd think you'd get a more powerful spell, but sadly, Wisp Dance fails to impress in nearly every situation. The ability just isn't great, and it largely comes down to its lackluster damage. Couple that with the fact that you need to spend pretty much every second up in an enemy's face while the orbs are active to make any sort of impact, and you're pretty much setting yourself up to fail. Again, really cool ability on paper, and I applaud the team for trying something different, but to get this spell in line with some of the other more meta offerings in the game, they need to take this one back to the drawing board. With that in mind, Wisp Dance is getting a D rank. Moving on to our travel skill, Veil of Illusion. When cast, players dash in a given direction, eluding nearby enemies for 2.2 seconds. Player's next primary attack also deals 25% bonus damage. When cast, players also spawn an illusion that throws a projectile, dealing 40% magic damage. Veil of Illusion can be recast, returning players to the start position and spawning a new illusion at the current location. Veil of Illusion is unlocked when players kill Pelora, the Feywalker, in Farbane Woods. This is the second ability unlocked when killing this boss. Let's get one thing out of the way right off the bat. Veil of Illusion's biggest strength is in its flexibility to recast. This is a valuable component in both PvE and PvP, and proves to be one of the biggest selling points of the skill. Being able to keep your enemies guessing as you engage in a duel has a lot of value, and thus makes the move really stand out from that perspective. However, that's really where the good stuff stops and the mediocre stuff begins. Veil of Illusion just doesn't really do enough to be that impressive. The 25% bonus damage is paltry, and the summoned illusion is a joke, barely doing any sort of meaningful damage. Again, the spell's single biggest benefit is in its recast and the ability to reposition, but aside from that, it doesn't stack up against some of the better travel skills in the game that do more to aid players in both PvP and PvE. With that in mind, Veil of Illusion is getting a B rank. Once again, Livid doesn't quite agree with this ranking and believes Veil of Illusion is more of an A tier or even possibly an S tier. Our first illusion ultimate ability is Mirror Strike. When cast, players dash forward and bounce between nearby enemies, striking them for a total of 600% magic damage split evenly across targets within the area over three seconds. Enemies hit are also weakened by 30% for five seconds. Once over, players dash towards their aim direction. This ability is unlocked by defeating Octavian, the Militia Captain, in the Dunley Farmlands. He's a tricky boss, one that our team felt would be a pretty big hurdle for players, but luckily the reward fits the effort required to kill him. Mirror Strike truly saves the Illusion Tree from being a total dud. This is a really fun ability that once again showcases the developer's ability to think a little differently about their spells and abilities within the game. The real selling point here is twofold, the sheer damage potential and the overall ease of which players can pull off the move. 600% is just a lot of damage and really makes the ability feel impactful. In both PvE and PvP, this ultimate feels, well, ultimate, and that's always a good barometer for if the team has done a decent job designing an ability of this caliber. The second aspect of the skill that I really like is its ease of use. As long as you hit an enemy, the ability pretty much does the rest, providing players with an almost set and forget mentality. It's a great ability, one that I believe players should consider in their builds, and to that effect, Mirror Strike is getting an A rank. Our final illusion skill is Spectral Guardian, the second ultimate in the tree. When cast, players summon a Spectral Guardian that shields allies in an area for 125% of the player's spell power. It also attacks enemies with powerful swings. The defensive shield is reapplied every 1.5 seconds, and the Guardian lasts 7 seconds. To unlock the Spectral Guardian, players need to kill Terra, the Geomancer, in the northwest portion of the Dunley Farmlands. She can be found isolated at Bedrock Pass. I hate to say it, but we're ending with a dud. Spectral Guardian is easily one of the worst ultimate abilities in the game, and I can't think of a single player that would take this over the array of other, more powerful abilities. I like the concept, a Guardian that provides a defensive boost to players, but those effects aren't felt for as short a time as the Guardian is active. Something isn't quite right with this spell, and whether it's the potency of the shields or the overall length of the summon, it's impossible to compare this next to nearly any other ultimate and think they're in the same league. What I will say is that Spectral Guardian does have some value in PvP in some niche scenarios, especially when players are engaging in groups. But outside of that, I can't imagine any player making an argument that this is a good ability. Maybe I'm wrong, and you can all let me know in the comments, but when push comes to shove, we're giving Spectral Guardian a C rank. 
So here's the deal. The Illusion skill tree is my most favorite and least favorite set of abilities in the game. On one hand, the developers really did a nice job trying to think differently about spells. How many games can you name that have a set of abilities based on Illusion magic? Probably not many, and for that reason, they score some points. Unfortunately, the spells themselves, for the most part, just don't hold up against other skills across the various other trees. When I was putting this video together, I tried to make an all illusion build work, and I just couldn't. It just doesn't get the job done. The real issue is the damage. Not a single ability outside of Mirror Strike really packs a punch, and that's a serious issue if the developers want players to take the tree seriously. I do think certain abilities like Spectral Wolf are solid, but only in more diverse builds that step outside the illusion tree. My honest opinion is that the illusion magic is cool, but it's not that powerful. But with a little love, I think the developers could make it into something much more potent. We hope you guys enjoyed our rankings of the illusion abilities in V Rising. If you have any questions or want to share your rankings of the illusion abilities, you know what to do. Leave us a comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Of course, if you did like this video and you want us to continue on with our ranking series, we need your help. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. If you're interested in joining our V Rising private server, consider joining us on Discord. We've got a small PvP server with 2x resources set up for anyone to use. Just check out the link below and join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us even more, consider becoming a member. For just a few bucks, you're helping Livin and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.